Your age, get your age, your boy Todd back here with another video, and in this video today, guys, I'm going to be going over, we're going to be going over and ranking our top 10 budget cards in NBA 2K23, my team. Now, if you missed anything else, top 10 point guards, shooting guards, small forwards, the top 100 over overall cards in my team. Make sure to go check that out and, uh, and, and, and tune into those videos. But if you are just starting my team or are looking for budget cards, this video might be for you guys. Now, I would say the last two, the last two days, the last couple of days, we've gotten some really solid daily rewards. Now, what are the daily rewards? Well, yesterday it was Jonathan Isaac. Today it is D Rob. I do think I need to refresh my my team page for the uh, Dark Matter D-Rob to show up. But if you get Jonathan Isaac and D-Rob, those are two really solid options to start your squad as well. Now, again, that's just kind of my uh, opinion on things. But again, if you can add that Radiant D-Rob to your squad, that is a very, very solid addition. We're gonna start it off at number 10 with Galaxy Opal Hero Thurl Bailey. Now, you have heard me probably talk about Thurl Bailey more than anybody else in the My Team community, and I am perfectly okay with that because I will gas Thurl Bailey until the end of time. Now, does Thurl Bailey play for me and my specific squad at this stage? No, but could he? Absolutely. Good three ball, great release, good defense, 57 base badges. I mean, the card is basically perfect. I'm just throwing that out there. Like, Thurl Bailey is one of the basically most perfect cards in the entire game. Now, obviously, he doesn't play for me in this specific account. So, for me, I can go through and sell Thurl Bailey and just maximize my MT on it. But I'm telling you guys, if you can get Thurl Bailey for 6,000 MT, it's hard to beat that at the small forward position. At number 9, we're plugging in a power forward, this one being Anderson Verjao. Now, Verjao is really hyped up. And honestly, guys... I gassed him when he came out. Is he better than Tim Duncan? Probably not. But Anderson Verjao is a guy you can run at that power forward position that can knock down shots. He can be a kind of good offensive option. The problem with Verjao is he's just that little bit undersized. Only 6'11", and that does hurt his value. Defensively, obviously really solid. Badge-wise, nearly perfect. Has a great release as well. To me, it really just comes down to the fact that Anderson Verjao does leave a little, little bit to be desired in that height uh, department, but everything else about him is really solid in my team. At number eight, we're plugging in Dark Matter Kevin Garnett. Now, you guys might be like, what, Ty? Kevin Garnett, what are you even talking about here? I gotta even, I don't even remember, like, yeah, obviously he's glitched. Here's what I'm talking about. The Dark Matter out of position KG is now cheap in my team, which is crazy to me. The fact that this card is what, 15,000 MT? If you have 15,000 MT, I'm gonna say it in the nicest way possible. Look no further than Kevin Garnett. 13,000 MT for KG. I mean, are you kidding me? 12,000 MT for KG. 9,000 MT for KG. What are we doing putting KG at 9,000 MT, guys? What are we doing? I mean, honestly, KG for 9,000 MT, He's a guy I need to add to the No Money Spent Squad series. Like, you can run him and he can compete at the highest level. I'm just going to show something to you guys to, to show off how good and how high I am on this KG. His release is basically, I think it's the Lamelo base KG upper on very quick. He's 6'11 at the 2. What more can you ask for out of 10,000 MC than this KG card? When I first assembled this list, I thought KG was like 15,000. For 10,000 MC... He's a no-brainer on nearly a must-pick-up for your guys' squad. I'm just throwing it out there. This card, absolutely elite in my team and is one of your best 10 budget options in my team. I got him for 9000 Going to turn around and sell him for 11.9. I guess. I, I, I don't know why he's so cheap, but I guess i just take the MT where I can get it. But just know, KG is absolutely elite in my team and definitely a card that I would pick up might pick up on my No Money Spent Squad series today. At number seven, we're plugging in Mr. Arvidas Sabonis Hero Card. Again, I'm plugging in the top budget cards in my team. And when we come, when it comes down to it, well, I, you know, here's the deal. Rouse, too expensive. Mark Eaton's too expensive. The guy that's not too expensive, Hero Arvidas Sabonis. And I like him just as much. 
The big thing is you've got to get his release down. Once you get his release down, everything else is going to take care of itself. I love Arvidas in my team. And again, if you can't afford Yao's, Ralph's, all those guys, pick up Arvidas Sabonis and go have fun with him. At number six, we're plugging in Dark Matter AK-47. And here's the thing. Like, here's, here's where I get it when people don't want to pay for KG or whatever the case may be. Because you got AK for 12,000 MT as well. And this card is absolutely elite. 6'9", 95, three ball, good driving, done great defensively. The thing is, he's just not as tall as KG. Movement-wise, better release, probably quicker. I think it's a preference based between AK, between KG. Both the cards at the small forward shooting guard position, though, are absolutely elite in my team. And again, for their specific value, in my opinion, are tough to beat. Coming in at my fifth best overall budget card in my team is Eamon Thompson. Now, his price is getting kind of, uh, it's getting kind of cheap, honestly. I, I saw the 20000 I was like, yo, this is more expensive than I thought. But you can get him for, what, 12000 MT? That's not bad at all, right? This one even has an extra Hall of Famer and is graded for 12.6. 6 7 not a great 3 ball, but if you do get a good coach, it's just fine. Great speed, lateral quickness, badge-wise, nearly perfect. I'm telling you guys, Eamon Thompson is nobody to sleep on in my team. If you pick up Eamon Thompson, he can go out there and compete with anybody on the basketball court. He is that elite in my team at the point guard position. D-Rose base does a lot of good for you guys on the court. At number four, big Jezrudis Ilgauskas. Now, as times went on and all these other gu shooting guards are getting cheap, I'm kind of getting not as high on Big Z. Like, for example, Jonathan Isaac came out for free yesterday. Okay, he's nearly just as good as Big Z. 7 3, 94 3 ball, good driving dunk. Really solid defensively. Sure, his speed might not be that high, but the big thing you guys got to realize is Big Z is 7 3. A lot of the centers in my team that are that tall cost a lot outside of Arbita Sabonis. So, my suggestion to you guys would be pick up Big Z, put him on your put him on the opposing center, and then that way, if you're running Anderson Verge out at center, you got somebody that can compete against your opponents, big guys in my team. Big Z can kind of fill and play that role. That's why he's up there at number four. At number three, we're plugging in Dark Matter Ben Simmons, who a lot of people might not sit there and gas. I always gas this card. I mean, always. You want to talk about a guy that can compete at the highest level for 7,000 MT, it's this Dark Matter Ben Simmons. He is one of my favorite players in my team and probably the cheapest option, one of the cheapest options here on this budget tier list, 611. The only downside to Ben is the three ball. But look, if you give him the right shooting badges, which aren't super expensive to do, you can make him absolutely elite. One of the best on ball defenders in the game at the point guard position. Outside of the hero Ben, probably the guy I'm taking defensively as that overall best point guard of my team. At number three, you'll see him on a nobody spent for the foreseeable future. At number two, we're plugging in Dark Matter Chris Steps for Zingas. I know I mentioned how there's not a lot of guys at 7-3 that can go out there and compete. This Chris Steps for Zingas is the guy that can and is the guy that I'd recommend. Yes, 16,000 MT isn't cheap, but he's 7-3. Great three ball, can handle the ball, really solid defensively. The difference between this KP and the Invincible KP is so small. Trust me, I feel like if I put on a blindfold and hopped into a game, I would not know which KP I was using. I really wouldn't because I think they are that similar. Both have the release on very quick. Both the dark matters. Both movement wise are good. Both are going to be some of these best stretch bigs in my team. KP is absolutely elite in my team. And no surprise coming in as my overall best budget card in NBA 2K23 right now is Dark Matter Trace McGrady. Now, his price continues to go down, continues to get cheaper and cheaper. For 12,000 MT, good luck finding much better. And I don't say that to say you can, I'm just saying that's a great value. 6'8", 97, three ball, 98 driving, a good ball under defensively solid, speed ladder, quickness great as well. And badge wise, I mean, he's nearly perfect. The easiest or one of the easier releases to green in the entire game. Another guy I just want to give an honorable mention to up here is Dark Matter Tim Thomas. He probably should have made this list, kind of forgot about him, so definitely do want to give him an honorable mention for as cheap as he is, absolutely elite for 8,000 MT. Just wanted to give those guys honorable mentions because I do believe Tim Thomas, T-Mac, it is preference-based between them. I just think for the average person that loads up 2K, 
And it's going to be so much easier for them to use a Trace McGrady card than a guy like Tim Thomas in my team. That is going to wrap it up for our top 10 budget players today, guys. Let me know your thoughts on it down below in the comments. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, man, I love you guys. And have a blessed day.